Hey everybody and welcome back to me ranking every single unit in Wargame Red Dragon. And we're gonna take a look at the vehicle tab today. Besides the transports. Just vehicles, no transports. The transports we already did in case you're watching this at a later point or haven't seen any other episodes. We did them, uh, you know, on their own. And today we're gonna take a look at just the normal vehicles that you can put into your vehicle tab. Um, I don't think there's anything else to add. I guess quick question regarding helicopters. I mean, I guess not a question. I will also split the helicopters between transports and non-transports. And um, yeah, there's gonna be... <laughs> Today's bell curve is gonna look like something like this. A lot of D and E tier. Or like C, D and E is gonna have the most units, I reckon. Very, very few S and A tiers. Probably a good amount of B tiers, but I think C, D and E is gonna be the majority. Uh, unfortunately, for various reasons. But um, yeah, I think uh, let's let's get into it. First unit, Amex NP Milan, one of the very very few non DLC units that can shoot both auto cannon and Milan or Eti GM at the same time. Um, another one would be the Pram, the Czech Pram vehicle tab that has its HE gun, and the Conquerors can also fire at the same time. Uh, but for example, the Aslev, I'm very certain, cannot. Actually, I I don't know. I actually do not know. I don't think it can, but once again, I forgot to open the armory tool beforehand, so let me do that. Uh, but in any case, the MXNP Milan, it's not horrible. Du mainly due to the fact that it can fire auto cannon and Milan at the same time. It's just a basic Milan and just a basic, you know, 100 RPM auto cannon. It's a good auto cannon. Three armor is nice, but at the end of the day, the fact that for most decks, well, the fact that the first vehicle tab slot costs one point, one point I should say, one activation point, and in Eurocar as well, it is nearly all the time empty. I think tells you enough that even the MXMP Milan, which isn't really too bad, is still never seen. Tells you already enough about the unit. You know, it's out of all the vehicles, there are certainly worse ones, but. I don't think it's better than C tier. Also, the SF Turtle cannot fire both weapons at the same time. Amex Hot. You can. It's also always good to know. You can look at the vehicle tab or just the vehicle model very often. Is it actually visible from here? Uh, yeah, it is. You can very uh, just look at the models to see how many tubes it has ready, and that means. Uh, it can fire this many missiles before having to reload. It's very crucial because, for example, if you look at uh, this one, only one tube in five seconds means it has to reload for five seconds after each missile. And this one has four tubes in 20 seconds means it has to reload for 20 seconds after four missiles. In any case, Hot One is a solid ATGM. Good range, acceptable accuracy in AP for the price. I think in general, like pure ATGM carriers are a bit undervalued not massively but i think sometimes people underestimate them a bit but it should also be said with the prevalence of smoke and so many forests on so many maps it's hard to really make use of that where you're often better off just getting like a heavy tank even if it costs three times as much or something or if you want an 80 gem just an infantry base 80 gem because it's a lot more stealthy um yeah it's just the sad truth and there's really no easy way to fix them unless you know giving them some stealth. But I think giving them giving vehicle based edge gems stealth across the line is not is not a way to go. Um yeah. This is just a basic toe to this is this is a weird launcher. This seems a, looks a bit too small in my eyes. Like this is like seems to be like a very similar tube, but this one looks more appropriate. Unless unless the basic toe was had a smaller diameter as well, but I'm not an expert, so who knows? It's just a basic toe has to reload after every single missile for five seconds, which is not very good. It has I mean it has three armor, but it's yeah, you rat no rat of course. This one wouldn't be too bad if it didn't have to reload after every single missile. Um, the fact that it's fast and two armor is actually kind of nice. The eye toe, I think, is a bit underappreciated. 
um, because very often edit gems are more often used for like IF vehicles or something or nasty side draws. I mean, yes, you can, especially with like M2 Bradleys, you can do like some toe two spam and it can be really nasty if it uh, catches your opponent off, uh, off guard. But the Ito is uh, really useful for like, you know, like I said, nasty side shots, IV snipes and such. And it's generally a lot more affordable. But <sighs> having three load after every single missile is just, you know, if you go up against a single target, even, or I should rephrase, even if you go up only against a single target, it can be annoying because if you miss, then it's, if it's like an IV or something, a decent IV, good chance that you're just gonna die. Which is why having at least two missiles at the ready, one after the other, is, is so, so important. Speaking of, there we have one. It's 60 points, it has two missiles at the ready, which is nice. Toe 2, of course, is one of the best vehicle-based ATGMs you could get. Um, arguably the best, given how widespread it is. It hits like a truck, it is incredibly accurate, has good speed, not amazing, but good, and good range. Obviously comes on all types of platform, both vehicle and helicopter based. Um, but I think it's still one of the worst Toe 2 carriers. It's of course also tracked, so it's not very fast. To armor is kind of nice, but not too amazing. But it's also 60 points. We're gonna have a lot of C tier units today. <laughs> um, why well, not an ATGM vehicle? The Aslov 25 FSV. I don't think I have anyone. I need to tell anyone that the base pushmaster is one of the worst auto cannons in the game. It has good accuracy and uh, okay range, I guess. Two AP, but one HD and very very low rate of fire. It has the same rate of fire as the Martyr 2, while having like one third of the AP. Oh, it's a vehicle, I can't even... Hold up. Of course it's on the transport, but... Yeah. Same rate of fire, half the suppression, two-thirds of the HD output, one-third of the AP. It's 20% points lower accuracy, half the stabilizer, and of course also lower range. And the same rate of fire. Usually low caliber guns, compared to high caliber guns in terms of autocannons, make up for the rate of fire. Not in the case of the Bushmaster. Uh, yeah. That said, it is on an incredibly fast, incredibly mobile, and very, very, very cheap uh, vehicle. Um, in and of itself, it's actually not that bad. I genuinely give it B tier. But I'm debating you. Actually, it's it's C tier because I would give like the actually what did I give the LAV twenty five Regan B tier? Yep, B tier. I was just about to say I would give the Regan version B tier, which costs the same. Um, so which and has optics and stuff. And of course, in the rankings, I don't actually take into account the activation points cost, because this one, of course, has the advantage being in the vehicle tab, which essentially means there's a lot of bad vehicles here. So, you know, very often you can just easily fit it in if you have just one activation point. Um, yeah. That said, you know, just having access to like a cheap mobile autocannon can be very useful. Next up, as of 25-2-2, actually, I kind of like this. Um, it has only four tow 2 missiles, but it has to can fire both at the, after one after the other. You can see the tubes on left and right. Um, has It's essentially the same, but it has a late Bushmaster, so it has increased AP accuracy and stabilizers, and uh, four tow 2s with two edge ready. Honestly, I think this is vastly underrated. Here's the thing with AT gem carriers. Most of the time, you will, will not be in a position to get more than two or three, maybe four missiles off. Um, honestly, rarely more than two, especially if you're fighting against tanks. And so you don't really need that many. You also don't need that many already, but you don't need that many, period. And very often you're then going to be in a position to resupply them anyway, at least in my opinion. And even though it's, again, just a Bushmaster, it is still an auto cannon, right? Which is better than like a basic MG, which it actually also has. Um, so I think this is actually kind of underrated, the, the SLF 2 
but maybe I'm just overrating it. ASU85M. Well, here's the thing, the unit card actually kind of lies to you. It only has 6 RPM for the HE gun, right? The kinetic gun has three, uh, 8 RPM, sorry, but the HE gun with 3 HE only has 6 RPM. It's of course a massive, massive disadvantage or you know, massive nerf, I suppose. Um, if it had you know, 8, it might not be too bad, but with 6... Like, don't get me wrong, it's still like 15 points only. And the city has like a 50 cal, right? So that's not too horrible, but also it's no turret and only two front and only one side armor. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna start saying this, I am not a fan of recoil as rifle jeeps at all. I don't like any of them. I just think most of the time they're a waste of points. Too easily killed. With so many auto cannons and cheap rigging vehicles around, they will just instantly pop them and if you have a four stack then the other three are suddenly panicked and won't do jack shit. I don't like them. I don't like them. You can meme around with them, but I don't think they're very good. And this is the basic HJ8 with a low range. The other HJ8s have 2800 meter range, with the highest N1 actually even more. I guess it's an HJ9. Um, it has 22 AP. It's essentially a hot with 10% less accuracy. As you can see. Uh, for 25 points. What else do we get for 25 points? You know, obviously, I rarely use them because they're bad, but you know, I have to evaluate just exactly how bad they are. I mean, for the same price, you can get a Milan 2, which has low range, but higher accuracy and higher AP. I tow for five points more. Basic tow, I mean, you get more, but this stuff is pretty bad. Um, but it does have only 40% accuracy. Get a Chumat. It used to be 15 points, I think. That was actually kind of crazy. Before the speed buff. Um, Conquerors. I guess it's more or less on the same level. I think actually the to the, the jeeps, the ATGM jeeps, they are actually kind of underrated. Uh, he says and puts it in C tier anyway with all the previous units as well. But they're also just so, so cheap. And at the same time, very often they, they're just as survivable as stuff like this, right? Obviously not all the time, especially not necessarily in one versus ones where you go up more against mediums and less super heavies. But very often they also just get one tap just as easily. So you might as well just pay 15 points less for essentially what ends up being more or less the same unit, right? Obviously not in this case, because this is the only vehicle that uses this ATGM as far as I know. But I think you get a gist regarding Jeeps. That said, it is a fairly inconsistent one with only 40% accuracy. And let me actually take a quick look at what the speed of this is. Okay, it is, it is basically a tow speed. If I'm not wrong, yep, same speed as a tow missile, so that's actually pretty decent. Same range, of course, 22 AP is nice, but not that much accuracy. Uh, I guess you, you go into the C tier with like, probably like at the end of the day, 70% of the units, I feel. But this is probably also the most boring vehicle type. He says as he goes to the Raketash. Um, I mean, this is obviously a very, very meme unit. It has the rocket pods that are obviously not on a turret, so they can only shoot up front, meaning the whole vehicle has to turn to fire. And now that I think of it, I mean, IRL, of course, there's no way that a vehicle like this with four wheels can turn on the spot. But can it do it? Can it turn on the spot in war? Okay, I'll quickly pause the recording and do a test. <laughs> Alright, quick intermission. As it turns out, they can't just turn on the spot. Also, they have a much lower rate of fire than I than I than I expected them. Well, then I remember them. I thought they would fire them much much faster. Um, but yeah, let's go let's go back to the tier list. Okay, both Rakatash, what do what tier do I give you? Well of course if I was ranking them on Miminess, it would be pretty high up. The actual damage output would of course be pretty good, but it has very bad range compared to traditional fire support vehicles. Um 
Well, it has capabilities like stun and actually deal damage to IFEs as well. The actual burst damage is not going to be very high. Of course, there's going to be like some Mimi stuff as well with the napalm blocking line of sight, which can be fun. In reality, though, in practice, and of course, from the few times that I use it and I remember, given, well, for one, given the fact I never use this a whole lot, that already probably tells you enough that it's probably not very good. But also from the times that I remember using it, fun and all, the problem is, it is hard to actually get it firing. One, because it dies quickly, and two, because it has low range, and thirdly, it has no turret. Yes, it can turn on the spot, despite being just a normal four-wheeled vehicle. I mean, it, I guess it could have some very fancy um, uh, wheels, you know, where both the front and the rear wheels can turn. So I guess there is a way where it can, not quite on the spot, but, you know, can turn with a very, very low radius. Um, unless you can actually turn it by like 90 degrees, which I highly doubt. Um, yeah, it is just very impractical. Just very, very impractical. But, you know, once it gets firing, you know, it has some very, very good uh, damage output. No, no, um, no question asked there. This is absolutely useless. You know, the, the thing with the basic, the basic toe, of course, also is like only 15 AP, which means it will, will not even one-shot 15 armor. But the basic toe has the advantage that it is a toe, meaning it's fast enough, it's still pretty accurate and has good range. That is the one saving grace of the MX Pratt still being in D tier, despite not even being able to one-shot two armor vehicles. Then again, sorry for retconning the tier list, it is fucking 25 points. I'm, I'm, I can't with good conscience say it's D tier. WC 550, that's a prime team deck unit. Uh, contrary to the Perret or Hafiz, it also has only like one front armor and has no stabilizer and quote unquote only 26 AP. Of course, the Hafiz also has much lower accuracy, but 27 AP is, you know, an even bigger. It's a bigger number, obviously. Uh, it also means, you know, with 27 AP, you will double tap 19 armor, which is. Is there any commonly used tank with 19 armor outside of the Leopard 2A4? Um, I mean, there is a Jelly 1 Mark 2, but nobody, or Jelly 1 Mark 1 and 2, of course, but nobody really uses them. None of the Abrams have 20 uh, 19 armor. The T80s and T64s they have like 17 armor. And of course, the T80 has 20 armor. But I think there's not a lot of tanks with 19 armor, most notably the 2A4. But the 2A, and the, of course, the 2A4 NL and the SCRV 1 to 1. Uh, but they are fairly commonly used, especially in Eurocore and such. Um, but of course, even then, against like super heavies and other tanks, of course, it means you will deal more damage, which is nice. Um, it is a very fast missile. Let me actually compare that speed to the Perret speed and such. Uh, so the WC-550 has the same speed as... Actually, has a lower speed than a spike. Yeah, slightly lower speed. Slightly lower maximum speed, the starting speed is the same. The Perret has the same speed as the Spike. So the Perets and as well as the Hafizes, uh, missile are faster a bit. Not significantly, but I would say somewhat noticeably if you looked at them side by side. Also, of course, it has no stabilizer. Um, it hits like a drug, but it also carries fewer missiles. It is a fine unit. I would say in team. In team decks, it can be nice, especially if you can adjust it for the decks. And it can do some really nice work. It's also amphibious, which is nice, and of course, wheel, which is really nice. Uh, but of course, a lot. It, the Hafiz and the Perea are forgiving in a sense that medium tanks will not immediately one shot them, right? The Hafiz will get one, and the WC 550 will get one shot. And of course, also artillery against one armor means it will take a lot more damage. It's essentially the same unit, but you get a slightly less bad Malutka. It also is Mal. I, I don't know if Malut. Someone tell me if this is a typo or if the if Poland just called it Malutka without something be before uh, between the L and the U. I'm actually curious because some you you never know, right? Because sometimes the names look very similar, but you know, just the way. It, the country called it stuff, you know. Uh, the con it's a basic concourse 
for 35 points with five missiles at the ready even as you can see um like the thing with the concourse is in a similar situation like the ISO, but of course has 15 percent lower accuracy and missile speed which is I, I mean i mentioned before but in case you don't know missile speed is of course very important because it means that for one you know you hit faster which oh like it means you need a lower amount of time to of line of sight and it means that if the thing the attack is driving towards you you can earlier reverse or have a higher chance of evading if you don't have a chance to kill it instantly um the Missile speed is lower. Conquest has lower missile speed. Maybe I should know that, but now I know. Uh, by good margin, actually. Uh, yeah. I mean, Conquest M is nice, but I think... Uh, yeah, I, I, can't with, I can't say it's a good unit. You, like I said, I, I usually, you know, try to be... I'm, well, if someone uses like a HGM vehicle in the vehicle type, I'm not like someone who says, oh my god, what the hell are you doing? Immediately removed it, right? Because, you know, they are not by definition bad vehicles, even though some people seem to believe so. But the basic, basic Conquest is not making making a good case for itself. BRDM2 Manutka, I'm gonna add this in just in case the not having a Y in the, in the name is not a typo. Also, it's Manutka, not Manutka P. I mean, it is a minute copy, but it's just got... <laughs> Look at this. We have three times the same vehicle here, right? Poland, North Korea, Soviets. Literally the same. Except, like, the model looks slightly different here. Compared to the... No, th they straight up used the Concourse model for this thing. Eugen, fix, fix. This should be this model for certain. It has to be. There's no way that Poland's launched the Malutkas out of the same tubes as Conquers. Come on, Eugen, please. Um, actually, it is not the same model. You see how the tubes are have the same height throughout? Here they don't. Did they actually have their own special tubes for the Malutka piece? Someone please tell me what's going on here. <laughs> the, the tubes that the others not don't have? The, I, I guess the Yugoslavs also have the one, but they also probably just reuse the thing. So do the checks. I'm I am confusion. I am very much confusion. Um in any case, we have no <laughs> hold up, let me uh oh, so many copies. Alright, we have Malutka P, that is this, Malyutka P with a Y um, oh sorry, just Malutka that has the same as that. Then we have Malutka P and then we have this the three times with the same name. But different models someone please enlighten me with, with in regards to the models and such uh it's always fun going through the armory is it not where did we end up we started with the uh, ended with a concourse uh no we were at the type 85 susong po which okay i mean i'm just gonna like no not even it's it's a bad missile um i i don't mean to like insult you or something if I'm just not saying anything or like not explaining why it's bad because you're new I don't mean to be like that full of myself and be like if you don't know why this is bad you stop playing this game that's not what I'm getting at here but it is a very bad unit right uh, once again 14 AP means it cannot even one shot two armor one armor vehicles in and of itself aren't even that common or that threatening or probably not something that you will fight this against you don't even get that many missiles you're not even wheeled. You have two front armor at least, but it's just not very good. Let me re start this again. Root of thumb. If you're a heat gun or a heat weapon, or let me rephrase that, heat missile on a vehicle and you have less than 16 AP and this is your main weapon, you're garbage. Okay, Malutka P we have to add because it's yet another type of writing. <laughs> And we don't have to edit, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. Uh, the Malutka arc. We had him Conquest, we had Conquest M. This is actually better. You get both accuracy and AP, which are both very, very important. The speed is still not very amazing, but you actually 
you are actually kind of strong, right? You will double tap 15 armor, which is a very common thre AP uh, armor threshold on red 4 medium tanks. Most notably the M84, but also M1 Wilk, T72B1 and B, T72M1M. Uh, 14 armor on the Maxus, which, okay, nobody uses the Maxus because nobody plays Blue Dragons. Um, still 23 AP hits quite a bunch, and of course, still being basically the same vehicle, you will be able to fire 5 missiles in a row. Your wield, which sort of makes up for having only one armor. So there's that. We had you, Polo. Okay, the Polo, here's the thing, it has at least 17 AP. It has 17 AP, and I believe being an upgraded my loot guide probably has acceptable missile speed. Yes, it's even faster than the Concourse. Um, not necessarily faster than a tow missile, because it has a higher maximum speed than the tow missile, but a lower starting speed. Um, given that it also has low range, I assume that maybe near the maximum range it might be faster, but. Uh, I think on average it will probably still have a longer flying time. Still faster, significantly faster than a Conquerors. Or reasonably faster. Um, it has 17 AP, so it will at least one shot anything up to 3 armor, but still not particularly good accuracy. It will fire 6 missiles in a row, and it is wheeled. So, yeah. I will still give you like D tier. Uh, it's still just very very inaccurate and the thing with missiles is um, very often you you try to use them in a sense where let me put it this way this is good against light vehicles right but against light vehicles you very often just have your medium tanks you have your recon units right because re fighting recon units are so important these days most notably cheap ones right so there's a good chance you have these around you have cheap HM infantry around you have IVs around they are usually your things to deal with light vehicles. And of course, their advantage is they don't have to, you know, guide a missile for five seconds. The Polo does have to do that. And it's very bad against anything that has decent armor, right? So what does it do? Well, it kills light vehicles, but it does it less efficient than stuff for the same price or even cheaper. What could be we had, we had, we had, we had. CPTUs, okay, they are actually pretty good. Uh, CPTU, U, a uh, two. The thing with the CPTU is, it is very similar to the KPVT, right? Same caliber, 1 AP, the same ground range. I believe it's the same ground range, right? Right? It, it must be. I'm too lazy to look up. Um, but it has a much, much higher rate of fire and higher suppression, as well as higher range against helicopters. So they make good units for just bum rushing down the road or base defense, stuff like that. The one with four of them, uh, don't you know? Don't be fooled by the rate of fire. It does have essentially four times the rate of fire, but it also has to reload, reload for longer. Um, but the thing with these things is, it's most notably the very first burst that matters, whether you will survive or not. <laughs> Same for the enemy unit. So that's why paying five points here is actually quite worth it, but it doesn't catapult them into eight tier suddenly. This is, this is, I mean, okay, so first of all, you have 20 AP for 15 points. Oh, that's kind of pog. You have 35% accuracy and you get outranged by so many tank guns. I mean, I hopefully don't have to tell you why, you know, this is not very good. The advantage the tank guns usually, at uh, gems usually have is that they outrange tanks, which, you know, it's important for their survivability. This thing doesn't outrange tanks, at least not the ones that are commonly used. And let me actually look at the missile speed. The missile speed is slightly slower than the Conquerors, but yes. I mean, once again, if you want to meme around, do so. You know what, I'm gonna not put this in E tier, because given how cheap it is, you probably could somewhat successfully uses against like IFVs and just have like four stacks of them, fire them at like very close range where they will actually hit. Um, just live with the fact that one or two will die, but you know, the other two will hit with a 20 AP mo fairly likely and actually deal damage. So I guess that can kind of work, but yeah. The fact that it also like very slow and has bad autonomy goes against, like doesn't help with the, you know, doesn't help in that case because you will 
have to have be like they would need to be very mobile and be like in forest and such. An ITO carrier very very similar to the YP408 used by the Netherlands. Just you have better mobility, you know, but only one front armor. Um, but PST PSA JON Pst Psion. The Psst Psion with the Toe 2 tube does have four tubes to fire those missiles, which is nice. Um, but yeah, it's similar to the, I mean, compared to the Dutch tracked one, you get also a lot of Toe 2s. You can fire four it already, but you have only one front armor, but you're wheeled. Um, but you also still pay one, uh, you pay 60 points, right? And the thing is, they just still very easily die if you're not careful. Jalo. Um, well, there's two reasons why this unit is not used very often, and those reasons are XA185 KT and AMX10. They are so prevalent these days that there's no real reason to use this because what this mainly does is try to deny enemy wield openers and stuff like that. But since most of the wield openers that are that you would go up against are those two uh, contain those two vehicles, you just massively outclass, given that you cost either the same compared to the MX10 and you just get shit on, or you cost, if you ignore the infantry, half of what the enemy brings and you still get shit on. Um, and at max range, it won't even one shot an XA 185KT. It does fire 20 RPM, just raw 20, 20 RPM. Like, no uh, wanky, not wanky, wacky semi auto loader or some shenanigans. So you can fire for exactly one minute and, minute and then you're empty. It's it's a fun little unit. And honestly, I would still put this in B tier. Um, but this, yeah. Uh, it, it's not blue because the reason why it's not never seen is not because it's better units for to fill the role, but because it just gets hard countered these days. Um, but I think, I think some other decks would still like to use this if they could. I, I still think this is a bit underrated. Aviary, it is very slow, but that thing packs a punch. Uh, it used to have lower aim time, I think now it has two seconds. It used to have one second, I believe. Um, of course, pretty low rate of fire, no autoloader, but you know, if it shoots, then oh baby, the infantry can say goodbye. Obviously, obviously very, very high burst damage, very slow, very low, I guess not very low, but not that high autonomy. But I, I would say good enough autonomy. Um. It is an incredibly strong short range fire support. And yeah. Um just not seen very often because nobody plays Commonwealth and and in mixed blue you just use like M36s and the like. And you don't even need as much fire support because you just have like five pointers and Abramses and Merkava 2 A's and Did I already mention A A makes sense? And the A makes sense of course. Chimera. Okay, so one. Okay, it is not an amazing unit, um, but I I have to give this plus points. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't because I didn't with other units, right? So, in reality, this this you know kind of gets plus points because it's a vehicle trap, right? It is sort of like a heavy tank. Also, the hot gun clips through the the mantle or whatever is hilariously ugly. Um, it kind in reality, not in the tier list, but you know, in practice, this kind of gets plus points because it's in the vehicle type. Vehicle type has so many bad units that it's very easy to fit just one single unit in there. And a the Chimera is, in, for all intents and purposes, like a defensive heavy tank. It has no turret, which very hurts. It hurts a lot. It has no stabilizer, which hurts a lot. It has poor optics, which hurts a lot, and it doesn't have very good speed, which hurts a lot. On top of that, you know, not the greatest RPM, but of course, for 110 points, 19 AP and 20 armor is a lot. Compared to the Challenger 1 Mark 1, which for 5 points less, gets 1 less armor and 2 less AP. But of course, more mobile, has medium optics, and has a stabilizer. That said, you know, I can only repeat myself, the fact that it comes in a vehicle type is actually kind of nice. And I guess the saving grace of this unit. But still, it's just not very good. It is fine. It's like, there, there are a lot of worse vehicles. Um, but you know, if you have access to any acceptable tank between 100 and 120 points, or even like say 90 and 130 points, and you can fit it in, just use that instead of the Chimera. Um, 
a deck where I would consider using. Honestly, I can, I could, cons, I would consider using this in when it comes to coalition. Maybe in two decks. Let me think. Maybe three actually. Yeah, probably three decks. I think most notably in Scandinavia, because if nothing with good armor, <laughs> I mean, it would, it would be the best armored unit. Probably in Scandi. Maybe in Blue Dragons, because outside of the K1, like between the K1 and the Q model, they just don't have anything good. And obviously, only have one single unit between those two tanks, but the K1 A1 is just not very good. Um, what's in it? What? Where is it in the tank tier list? Is it C tier? I mean, I could use a certain. K1, A1, yeah, it's in the C tier. Yeah, it's not very good. So the, in those decks I would use them, and of course, and uh, Red Dragons as well, honestly, because below the 85.3, they just don't have anything particularly amazing. But I think the most likely used uh, thing would probably be Scandi. Because the thing is, Scandi, especially in 1 vs. 1s, is kind of weird by the fact that so much of the kills just get done by like artillery and infantry. So the Chimera just there for tanking stuff would actually probably work pretty well, honestly. Or tank, you know, especially in like closer enga range engagements, just tank the enemy shots and then suddenly the Erixes from Fast Kimmega around to, uh, appear to the left and right of it and just kill anything in front of it where this just sits there and does, you know, a shot every seven every seven minutes, no, but seven times a minute. Um, also, it has the highest side armor value of any unit in the game. Also, maybe even rear armor. Doesn't really matter that much unless this was a CV. Dude, imagine if you know you could get this as a CV without the gun. That'd be actually <laughs> very pogged. Um, but um, I, I don't know. Maybe it has the highest three armor. Oh, one of the highest for sure. Six three armors a lot. Um, so it's gonna be also pretty hard to kill with like HE artillery. Um, yeah. Also, it has the same gun as the Challenger ones, but only three HE, which is probably an oversight that never got fixed. Um. But at least the MG has a stabilizer, am I right? But yeah, it's it is a fun little meme unit. Cougar, the ultimate counter to the XA185 KT because it has 2,100 meter range and 10 AP, and thus one shots one armor vehicles. And of course, I'm joking. This unit is not very good. Just enough AP to one shot one armor and two shot two armor. Anything above needs at least three shots. I'm not this is the gun name. It does have actually very good range for the price, it should be said. But horrendous accuracy, not very good rate of fire, only 2 HE, no MG, of course no optics, which is unsurprising, but yeah, there's not a lot going for it. The Cougar Recon version has at least like stealth and optics, but this thing is, you know. What if there's just a tow carrier? Um... No, maybe it could, I mean, it could be D tier, maybe. It is weird and it is 5 points cheaper than, than the AMX, but... A hammer is a hummy with an Ito. Honestly, not that bad. Itos, like I said, are a bit underappreciated. Uh, it is 5 points cheaper than, like, the armored XAs and YP, but, you know... Honestly, when it comes to, like, these ADGM vehicles, because the thing is, you don't really, ideally, you don't really use them sitting defensively in a bush and waiting for the enemy to come, like you would with the HGM infantry. Because if you do that, then the chances are very often that the moment you fire, you will just get spotted and instantly killed. Ideally, the, the, actually, you, it's best to use them like kind of offensively or like aggressively when you're defending. So what you ideally want to do is you want to bait the enemy tank fire or whatever is firing at you with your infantry tanks, whatever, and then roll up with your ATGM vehicles and fire them, because then your opponent can't just, you know, go for your ATGM vehicles, because then he would ignore the other threats there. Or maybe if he's not micro, he's simply on attack move and then won't actually even notice you and bother you, and so on. So that's usually how they're best used. And then you get, like, the cheap tow 2 carriers for, like, 40 points or something in a 2 or 3 second, bam, essentially one-tap any enemy heavy tank. Um... So that's why, like, having one or zero armor is not really relevant. When you have, like, two or three suddenly, then it's nice, because that means at maximum range you will actually survive shots of nearly every medium tank in the game. So that, that, that that's when it becomes interesting. But one and zero armor, maybe even two... 
But yeah, one seal armor is mostly irrelevant for these units. At least in my eyes. Of course there's always niche scenarios, but yeah. Hammer Muppets is the Hamito too. It is 50 points and you have to reload after every single missile. 50 points is kind of expensive. Um, and unlike a has after 2, you don't get like auto cannons. You don't fire two missiles in a row. And I value that a lot. Maybe you don't. Maybe others don't. Maybe other good players don't. But yeah. Of course, like I said always, this is more of a subjective. A qualified subjective tier list. ERC 90 Sagaye. Uh, it is small, which is fun. It has 11 AP. So it, again, it will one shot one armor vehicles. It has only one armor itself. It's incredibly fast, even amphibious. Um, 10 RPM, which is kind of nice. Not outloaded, I'm very certain. Is this, hold up, someone tell me, this looks like an Amex 30 turret, kind of. In any case, um, yeah, very good accuracy, but no stabilizer. Doesn't have the same range as an Amex 10 RC. It is still, it is still kind of B tier, honestly. It is cheaper than the Shadow, but of course, you know, also it's only one armor and doesn't have the crazy rate of fire, but it is like very consistent with the 50% accuracy, which should be said. Uh, this thing used to have like a 5% stabilizer, uh, but this one is actually D tier because unless the Vigilant, it doesn't have two armor, which means that it will die much, much more easily. But yeah, Vickers Mark 11. Sometimes people are like, oh, it's so much better than the NAA makes sense, but no, it, it really isn't. It really, really isn't. Even not, not better than the Tank Tap version either. Because, yes, you have 17 AP, which is one more than the Tank Tap version and five more than the Recon version. You have full range, just like the Tank Tap version, and one step more than the Recon version, which essentially means another AP comparatively, and a bit more accuracy, and so on and so on. It has a stabilizer, which is the biggest difference, of course, which is admittedly certainly very nice. But, well, I should say, just like your mother, there is a big but. <laughs> it has only 8 RPM versus 9 RPM, which is big, because especially against like autocannons and stuff at closer ranges, you want to get a second shot out as soon as possible before you get killed by the rate of fire of their autocannons. Um, also, of course, it means you're much better against, you know, Fire support, rate of fire in general is always very nice to have, so one lower RPM is actually, I would always rather have a bit lower AP and increased RPM for these kind of vehicles, because usually they're meant to, or most notably they're meant to kill lightly armed vehicles, so like 17 or 16 AP doesn't really matter. And that's actually the biggest thing, it has only two front armor. The recon type version has three and the tank type version even has four, especially against autocannons, this is a huge, huge deal, a massive deal. And it's not even, you know, especially compared to the recon type version, let's not even forget about the fact that it costs 15 points more. Recon type version is, of course, the most important one, the strongest one out of them. Um, what the Vickers, of course, can do that the Amex sense struggle a bit more with is just fast move past tanks and be able to shoot it to their sides and rear while you're moving. That is, of course, very nice and something that the Amex sense can't really do. That is certainly true. But it's also not what their main role is. Uh, the Amex 10 RCSP, the tank type version, you just get the 304 stack and just drive very close and bully them with at, at front armor anyway. Because the thing is, if you just fast move past, it means you will get into line of sight of a lot more units as well, instead of like stopping right in front of it, especially in forests. But if you keep moving, sure, you might on the one hand evade one unit, but on the other hand, might also suddenly drive into line of sight of another unit. So, double edged sword in some situations. But overall, the Amex 10 is just offers a lot more utility. But going back to just focusing on the Vickers, that doesn't obviously mean the Vickers is bad by any means. But for 45 points, it tries to do too much. Um, like, it tries to actively do too much. Means you pay for a lot of stats that you don't really want to. You'd rather, with you, I mean, like, the unit would be better if it had some worse stats in some scenarios, but would be cheaper instead and making the unit actually more useful. Let's say you had only 15 AP and one step lower range, but cost 35 points. That would be a massive buff. Or let's say you had one extra RPM and instead of 
six uh, instead of and sixteen AP for the same price would also be a significant buff. Uh, but you know, like I said, that doesn't mean the unit is bad by any means. It's still like a kind of useful unit, but for the price, you just get countered by Amex tens and KTs. Uh, so you aren't, even though it might look like it, you aren't really the king of wheeled openers, at least not pound for pound. Uh, if you just compare units and ignore the price, of course you will in nearly all scenarios or many scenarios, and your actual firepower is of course better in some scenarios, but you have to take into price into account. I hate this unit with a passion, it's not very good. Some people like it, no, it's not very good. It has horrible rate of fire, not a lot of ammo, and um, yeah. I remember seeing a test of this unit firing at a hind, and it used up all of its ammo without killing the hind. That's all you need to know. It was at max range, but still. The Striker. This is essentially like the HJ-8 missile on the Jeep we had, but you get 5% more accuracy. Interesting. What's the speed, though? What is the speed? The same speed as the Conquerors, uh, so not very good. You have three front armor, which is actually kind of nice. You're fairly fast, you're small, so you're a bit hard, even like another tad harder to kill. But you also have quote unquote only 22 AP and 45% accuracy. You have, you know, it's actually kind of similar to the BVP MAD Polo, which we'll get to. I don't know when. It's it's B, so I don't know why it comes so late. Oh, it's LT actually. BVP is the IV version, of course. Or it stands for IV or something like that, I assume. Um Yeah, what else do we have for 40 points? That's tracked. I mean you have the hot, right? So for the same price. You lose accuracy. How, how fast is the hot? I assume it's slow, right? The hot, I think it's fairly fast. The hot, yeah, it is a good bit faster, like a good chunk. So the maximum speed of the swing fire is 750 and the starting speed 500. The AMX hot has a maximum speed of 900 and the starting speed of 750. So by the start of the, of the hot being fired, it's already faster than the, or just as fast as the striker will be at its maximum speed. If you ask me how long it takes to reach there, I have honestly no clue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is it is a good bit slower and even less accurate. But and honestly, that is already important like reason for me to give it a whole tier lower. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, young one. Rarden, well, yeah, one armor, slow. One of the worst autocans in the game. Not even like a. It's it's still the, it's the lowest version of the Raden with only thirty five percent accuracy. Later versions at least get fifty percent, but. Um, how to even rate this? I mean, the thing is, over a whole or like on average, the rate of fire is actually higher than the one on the Bushmaster, but of course, there's no stabilizer and much much lower accuracy. Mm -hmm. Let me actually check what is the actual over a whole minute. It's actually 31 rounds, whereas the LEV fire is 27. So it's not even it's 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 pretty minuscule. The the higher rate of like the increased rate of fire you have, it is only 15 points though. So it's not amazing, but probably somewhat acceptable like base defense and such. Just because, but just by virtue of how fucking cheap it is. Saladin. It has a horrible heat gun. Heat gun. It has. It outranges no real auto cannon, but gets outranged by most auto cannons. It has horrendous accuracy, giving that it's not an auto cannon. Horrendous AP. Seven heat means you you will not even one shot one armor. From like a proper gun, right? I mean quote-unquote proper gun, whether, whether you would call this a proper gun is a different discussion, but like something that isn't an auto cannon or like an HE gun. By heat gun, you're not getting one shot. You have to be some, you have to have some crazy stats for, to be worth taking. And then you have only 7 RPM and 2 HE. Yeah, don't bother with this piece of garbage. Um, the uh, set is use, 57 millimeters. They're Decent base defense, and I feel like they're better used offensively for their HE gun. 
because they stun incredibly fast and even if they roll a miss they have such a huge splash damage that they just insta stun even if like they roll a miss they're actually pretty nice for that um the main downside is actually just their speed if they were faster they would be a lot better in giving direct fire support or had increased ground range, which maybe is asking for some a bit much, but it would be cool if it had increased ground range, like even more compared to the supported version. The supported version, of course, has only 1,050 meters. This one, 1575, which is already three range steps. Um, another range step or so would be really nice, though, I have to say. I want to see, honestly, B tier. Uh, well, this is essentially the same as the BTR, but I'm just still just gonna put it in there. Flame tanks, they're they're an interesting bunch. So Nick really really likes them, and yes, you can do some Mimi stuff with them. The thing is, contrary to infantry flamethrowers, these are not indirect um, because. Which sometimes, you, which is very hard to notice if you don't pay attention, but the infantry-based flamethrowers, right, not not the, the like napalm launchers, but like the 350 meter literal flamethrowers, they don't require line of sight to actually fire. You can fire position essentially over buildings with them, which if you want to be microing really hard, can yield some nice results, but it's usually just not worth the effort, besides the fact that they're not the most useful type of infantry. But the flame tanks do not have this tool, luckily. If they could ignore line of sight and fire indirectly, meaning essentially 1000 meters through forests, they'd be ridiculously strong. But what they are actually kind of nice is, even though they can't fire indirectly, they have pretty high splash damage, right? Or leave a pretty big splash of flame behind. So especially with towns or something, you can hit town blocks behind or, you know, essentially stuff that is actually blocked by line of sight, so that's kind of cool. Um, so you can do some nice stuff, but they just require a lot of micro to actually be worth it. And something to keep in mind, it's not huge, but they don't have any HE value on their guns. They don't carry any HE rounds, which means you'll never be able to shoot at infantry at like your gun range. Again, it's really nothing big, but something worth taking, because, because if you're so used to, oh, it has a gun and it has stats on the gun, and you might not actually realize, oh, there's no HE value. Which is what happened to me very, a very, very long time ago. Um, and of course, seven armor. I mean, for a fire support vehicle, great. But for for something that has fire at essentially one thousand meter range, should be useful. Not that much, or you know, easy to kill, I should say. Also, bad optics is the worst type of optics optics you can get, outside of supply vehicles that have lit literally no optics. It's not particularly fast, but you know, that's not a huge deal because it doesn't have to move a whole lot. Um, with the right micro though, and it requires a lot of micro, it can be beat here, but I think I'm gonna put it in C tier just because, just because of the amount of micro it requires, honestly. It's just not reasonable. And even then it's just, even, and the thing is, even if you have the micro, it is still kind of situation, and some decks, against some decks, it's just very hard to actually make use of. Most notably decks with spikes, they would just instantly one-shot them. So, yeah. It's a basic toe and it has only one armor. Even worse than the... Amex. I toe, it's, I mean it's a Zelda with an Ito, but you don't get 3 MGs. It's also faster than a Zelda, it's 65 instead of 55. That must be an oversight. Right? I mean, I assume the reason why the Zelda is slower is because of the additional armor, right? Uh, in any case, uh, this is an Ito carrier. Uh, once again, has to fire after a single missile. So, into the C tier you may go. Oh, there they are. Hafiz and Pere. Um, Pere, of course, with 6 armor can survive even at maximum at maximum range, uh, only the M1A2 will be able to kill it. Assuming you were talking about a kinetic gun, you know, of course, you know, a T72 BU will be able to one shot it with a sphere missile. But ignoring those, only the only tank gun that can actually kill this is at maximum range is the M1A2, uh, which means that even at like, you know, if you go up against like, for some reason, like say you go up against one M84A, you would probably win that fight. <clears throat> 
For us, missile has incredible range, is incredibly fast, and has a stabilizer. Same with the Hafiz. Hafiz, of course, cheaper and lower armor, but most notably lower accuracy. Um. Honestly, I'm gonna put them both in B tier. They can be, they can do so much work, like an incredible amount of work, and yet in other times they will just be useless, right? That's the thing with many of these like high-end ATGM based vehicles. It's hard to active because they they they're not like medium tanks, right? Medium tanks you can always get some sort of value out of. Even if it's like airborne decks, medium tanks have some role. You probably will not buy a whole lot of them, but they have some role. The thing with these, with these ATGM vehicles, they are a lot more dependent on the map, a lot more dependent on the enemy deck. A lot more dependent on how the enemy plays. Do they use a lot of smoke? Do they use a lot of cheap I five pointers and whatnot? Do they rely more on heavy tanks, more on medium tanks, more on infantry, more than vehicles? Um, so that's why they they're the type of vehicle that you shouldn't necessarily build your deck around unless you're beaming. But if you're like trying hard, then I'm not saying you shouldn't put them in a deck by any means. But I'm not saying I'm saying that this shouldn't be from the get-go, your key to winning games. If it ends up being the unit that wins the game, then it's more of the, you know, due to the, give the situations determined by the situation of the game, who you're playing against, and the deck they're playing. And the map you're playing on. IKV-103. It is only 10 points, and it does have 2 armor. But only 20% accuracy. Uh, like 30% accuracy would be pretty good. Uh, heat, for a 10 point unit being heat, of course, you know, you'd probably still prefer kinetic, but it's 10 points, right? And you have 2 armor, and you have 3 HG, only 7 RPM, but you know, 3 HG. And actually, pretty decent range. Um, I think this is. It's actually, given that it's only 10 points, it's actually, it ranks actually fairly low. Um, but that incredibly low accuracy what is what. Hurts this the most. 30% uh, or something would make massively help. Ma make this a lot stronger. It's, and also, of course, you know, in Scandinavia, which is where you see this mostly, there's just no need for these type of vehicles because your fire support gen tends to be... You have automatics, you have CV-90s, you have STRF 9040s, stuff like that. And, of course, the infantry itself is incredibly strong. And you have the beacon, so you don't really need this type of fire support. So, AKV-91 is a heat slinger. Only 11 AP. I'd... It took me over five years to realize that this is actually the same model, or like nearly the same model. <laughs> um, in any case, <laughs> um, I guess because I just never look at this unit, you can't even see this. No, hold on. This is what I'm talking about. I didn't realize this. Uh, this is only heat. Heat is always, or like in most situations, bad on guns. And given that you're 25 points, you can't, you're not going to be spamming this. So you're going to use it in like two stacks or something, or three stacks maybe, rarely in four stacks. And given that their their heat means that even like if an enemy drives like an IV or something close to you, you will still need like two shots, even three if it has four front armor or four armor. Uh, yeah, you're, I mean you're reasonably mobile. Three armor isn't too bad against IFVs, but ah, it's not a very good unit. IKV-105 is a very interesting one, because you have, for 35 points, an incredibly strong gun, right? 16 AP, 2100 meter range, 8 RPM could be higher, but it's 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 fine. Um, you have medium optics, which is really cool. Despite having those fancy as uh, side skirts, uh, you still have only two side armor which is sad. Not really sad, it's not a huge deal, but as long as you don't have one side armor, you know, two side armor is fine enough for these types of vehicles, because then you won't just get instantly popped by AMX tens. But of course the gun is very strong, and you definitely you definitely can do some meme stuff at like close range and bullying like medium tanks with the kinetic scaling. And I think I think this is a good point to end this video, you know. Not starting like another cheap line. 
Um, going through this actually a bit slower than I anticipated, but I assume that uh, we're going to go through the rest of them next time. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll hopefully see you next time. Later.